Good morning, everybody. It's August thirteenth, two thousand sixteen. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna spend the time today talking about the more advanced side of covered call writing. Um, I get questions about this all the time. What happens when uh, the stock moves into or above your strike price, and you know your shares are going to be taken? You know, one of the fears with covered call writing. Uh, for the cover call writers uh, that are less experienced is that they're going to have their shares taken away from them. And um, for me, this has just been a process of changing your thinking. Um, having your shares taken away from you is a good thing. That means you've, if you wrote an out-of-the-money covered call, you've made the equity gain in your stock and you've kept your premium. Um, the big fear is that your shares are taken away largely because the stock has rolled past the strike price up and up and up and you missed all that upward movement because we know we limited our upside by writing a covered call. So having your shares taken away is a scary thing, or at least for most people, that's probably the number one question is, oh, what do you do when your shares are taken away? About your shares being taken away. Well, with covered call writing, you have the ability to uh, have control and buy that option back if your shares haven't been taken away. So what I did was I created a little calculator on my end, uh, nothing nothing uh, spectacular, but it allows me to uh, start to calculate when uh, my premium, when the real money, when the real money and my option price starts to converge where uh, it makes sense to buy that option back. Uh, Sometimes I've written calls where literally in the money, the, the real money in the stock uh, has equaled the premium at that moment. I've done that at least three times and it's unbelievable. You buy the stock back, you buy the, you buy the option back at that moment, you have essentially frozen the, uh, the, uh, the option in the sense of you, you've captured the premium back and you have your shares. You have alleviated yourself from the obligation to sell your shares. You could write another covered call. So let's go ahead and talk real quick uh, about this process and how I do this, okay? So in the case of um, this, remember that a, uh, remembering that a, an option consists of intrinsic value and time value. So if you think of an option as this uh, sort of this thing, Okay. It has uh, intrinsic real value money and, and time value. And if a stock hasn't reached, let's say, the strike price, it's all time value. Meaning if you got paid 41 cents and the stock is not 56.50, that's all time value. And, um, but now as the stock moves past the strike price, we get the intrinsic value meaning the real value, the real money that has been made from 5650 in this example of Microsoft, and time value. So as the stock starts to move past 5650 this way, this option that I wrote, I got paid 41 cents for in this example, starts to become real value, real money. Okay, there's real money here to be had. Okay. And then the time value, because it's a decaying value, it starts to move towards that expiration date. It's going to shrink. So you might have a, an option that is literally 99% uh, uh, intrinsic value, which is real money value. And then you know, that 1% equals the time value. Okay. And that's where we want to snag it. Okay. So let's go ahead and just uh, run some numbers here. In this example here, Microsoft... Uh, here's my chart on Microsoft. Let's say down here I wrote this nice weekly and I got paid 41 cents for it. Microsoft started to move higher. I know this isn't a weekly chart, okay, but I'm just using this as an example. And it starts to move and it clearly moves past our 5650 strike and now above that is real money. There's real money in that option, okay? Now it's not real money to you. You remember once you get past 5650, and the premium you were paid, that's all you can profit from. So once it gets into this real value here, this real money value, anything above the 5650 plus the premium you got paid, you're gonna have to buy that 
option back at cost. Okay, it's money out to get money in because we're going to sell the stock immediately after we buy the option back. What we're looking to do, we're looking to essentially capture the premium that we got paid. We want to capture that entire premium. Forget about the fact that you're going to have to pay all this profit back in cost. Okay, forget about that. That's done. That's money out, money in if you buy the option back and sell immediately. What we are focused on is keeping the maximum amount of our premium. So, again, this is all based on once the stock gets past the strike price, we're getting towards our expiration. We want to buy the stock back so we do not sell or do not have our shares taken away from us. So, we are now going to monitor this. So, in this example, just to finish this up, the stock has clearly moved past 56.50. There's a buck 44 of real money value. Okay, the option in this situation is a buck 46. Okay, so so right now there's a dollar 44 in real money in this option, and there's a mere two cents. Do you see the difference here? The difference is two cents of time value. See the real money above the strike. Okay, plus notice the two cents for time value. So I got paid 41 cents. But right now, in this scenario, there is real money in this stock. Real money. And the option is about 46. If I buy this back, if I buy this option back right here, okay, you would do you would uh, you would go to your uh, broker and you'd say buy to close. And you pay the buck forty-six. Okay? You pay the buck forty six. Well, the real money in the stock is one forty four. You paid back a buck forty six, two cents. You have given back in what you're going to receive back when you sell the stock. So essentially, what that boils down to, because remember, you are going to buy back the option at one forty six. When you immediately sell the shares at this price, you're going to get one forty four back in real money money out money in your account okay what is the difference the difference is you're left with not 41 cents remember you got paid 41 cents you're left 41 cents minus the two cents give back so in this case you would get a grand total of 39 cents for the premium now we keep our share pardon me we, we alleviated our obligation to sell the stock to this person. We have our shares. We immediately sell the shares so we can realize the 144 in uh, real money value. And all we're left with is that debt of two cents. And uh, we essentially picked up 41 cents prior. So our uh, total profit for this is going to be the 39 cents. Okay. Um, and any any stock movement. Say say you bought this at 56. If you bought this at 56, it's gone to 56.50. You made the 41 cents. Uh, it's gone beyond 46.50. We're going to buy it back when the when this number makes sense. And in this case, it's two cents. Now, I immediately sell my shares, realizing the 39 cent premium. We buy the shares back. We do it again and again and again. Okay. So buying back an option gives us the uh, flexibility that we need to uh, um, control the situation. And like I said, I've said this before, I have literally been able to um, have real money in the stock and the premium equal the real money in the stock. I don't know how that happens, but it happened. It happened three times, in fact, with Chevron and Halliburton. Um, Generally, what I've noticed is you'll see a 10 cent differential. Okay, you'll see 10 cents, and as it starts to, uh, as it starts to come uh, together, you know, uh, you'll look to buy. You'll look to buy it back, or whatever makes sense for you. Okay, so as I close this video out, using the buyback option, um, you can control the situation. You can collect some premiums. And you can keep your shares, buy your shares, sell your shares. We do this again and again. Uh, good
Good luck, and I hope all your cover calls are proper.